Good evening and welcome to, uh, to the Velocity of Now, me your host Thomas Sheridan on the realitybitesradio.com network. My website is thomasheridanarts.com. It is the 22nd of July 2015 and I'm going straight into the show tonight because it's, well, it's, it's pretty epic even by our high standards that we've been attaining lately. Well, this is the show that I promised I would do the follow-up to the dream, sorry, the sleep show from a couple of weeks ago. And I, I, when that show was on, I, we explored the nature of sleep, what we sleep really is. And it's it, the show was absolutely enormous in terms of its impact. There was thousands upon thousands of downloads all over the place. It went through the roof, and during the show, I asked for people to send me emails about their dream stories in the time between then and now. And I was expecting about 30 or 40. I've gotten over 200 so far, and that's uh, and often that's and I think people sent me more on the. Facebook, which is my Facebook uh, private messages, I can't get. They're so backed up at this point, I can't. I just can't get to them. But so we're looking at a minimum of 200 emails I was sent with dream stories. That's a minimum, and it's uh, turning out to be a gigantic project. But it's something I don't think we should end this week. I think. We should not put it to sleep this week, put it that way, the bad pun. Whatever that program was about that night, it touched people in a way that I don't think I've reached people that, you know, with that much power and impact since the very early days when I started making YouTube videos on psychopaths and that became a, the Labyrinth of the Psychopath videos, which became pretty pretty popular very quickly I don't think this is the first time since then that I've indulged in a topic that reached that impact into people's consciousness into their lives into their own experiences more than that sleep show and I think that sleep show will probably go down as pretty historic in terms of its impact what it achieved and what we spoke about if you didn't listen to that show, it's on my YouTube channel, Thomas Sheridan Arts on YouTube. Also, don't forget to go there and subscribe and check out the Velocity of Now Annex programs. These are the VON Annex programs, which are short editorials and commentaries by me on different topics that I haven't got time to put in the show, or they come to my mind before the show or after the show. And I'm not, or else I'm not in the context of the show because I like to keep the shows theme orientated. But the sh the show was tremendous. It was just unbelievable in, in terms of how many people listened to it. How many? And I got so many emails and letters from it. Now, if you didn't listen, the basic premise that I put out there, and it's just a hypothesis. It's not a fact. I, you know me, I, I very rarely put my nail my colours to any specific hard thing because I, I follow, you know, as a true 40 and as I see, I see myself, I don't believe there's an absolute truth to anything as such, just a fashion that's been in vogue for a while. And so my hypothesis is that perhaps when we fall asleep and begin to dream, what we're experiences, experiencing is another part of our existence, another version of us, or us in a different world. That's why we'll often have dreams of us making love to people that we only know casually in real life, or having fights with them, people that we get on with in real life appearing in our dreams, and all these kinds of things, and visiting places we've never been to. Now, because the data has been so immense, I've decided to make this an ongoing project because it's just too, it's too powerful just to have on, you know, two shows about it and leave it at that because I think there's something amazing to it. I read every single email. I, I replied and, and private messages. I didn't get all of them on Facebook yet because that thing is well backed up. 
and it's very difficult to read Facebook messages because of the nature of that the way that the messages are set up on that thing. But however, there's so much data was coming in that what I really need to do, if any of you have any suggestions to email me or send me a message somehow of some kind of program that I can get where I can put all the dream stories into it and I'm talking about not the ones the 200 I've, odd I've received so far but the ones that will continue to pour in and I, because people seem to be very eager to be involved in this thing from this point on that I can put into a program that can somehow it's a, as simply as possible do counts on phrases, search for phrases, do counts on phrases, identify the most common terms that appear and maybe even the most common phrases that appear and that such as such the names of places and so on. So if you don't have any help with that you can give me, I would really appreciate it because I'm a long time out of the working scene and I've really fallen years behind in software and things like that. I used to be able to write access macros and stuff, but I haven't got time for anything like that anymore. If there's anything I can download that doesn't cost me any money that I can actually do use to make this a database that can search for terms because I really think we could be onto something very, very powerful. And of course, your anonymity is kept. I don't keep the names. If I do refer to you, you'll be by your first initial. So your secrets are safe to me, no matter what you dream about. Now, having read all the emails and having taken notes, the show is falling into two parts tonight, by the way. The first will be the initial intro to the, to the dream data that I asked to collect, and the second part will be about something quite terrifying. So it, it won't be for children to listen to. It will be about basically entities and demons attacking people in their sleep. And I've got some mind-blowing stuff there for you. And that's more common than people realize. But I start taking down notes on a notebook and writing down phrases and terms and so on. And three things have stood out. Three things I don't know why. I don't know why people are dreaming about these things. But the first one is people are dreaming a lot. I mean, this would probably be up to 50%, 50 to 60% of the stories that I'm coming in are dreams about people lost in strange buildings. Now, I don't know that's a cop. The, the stories they sent me are so similar. That's what's so weird about it. The buildings don't seem to make sense. Like, you'll have a staircase that goes to nowhere. You will have a, a corridor that kind of falls off into itself. That doesn't you open you open open doors that you think are leading to a room, and what they do is they lead to the same corridor that you were in. A lot of the dreams seem to focus on either the lower parts of the buildings or the midpoints of the buildings. Remember what I said that I was dreaming for a long time that I was at the, the I couldn't go into this house because there was a, a sense of absolute evil on the first floor and the second and oh, sorry on the second floor and third floor and now I can get up into the top floor so that actually sense of that sense of dread dread and evil. That's that's quite unique to a dream. That kind of sense of deep dread and deep terror is, is very unique to dreams, for me personally anyway. So buildings, houses, apartment buildings especially, especially apartment buildings that people are disorientated in and feeling not right in probably suggest that maybe these people who are dreaming are in these buildings in those dreams. They may be what people see and think are ghosts. It may be you or me in a dream in an apartment building trying to get our way around. A common one in it is that people try to open doors but they can't grip the door handle. Especially in those American apartment buildings where American houses have a round and buildings have a round doorknob. It's not like the Irish, I don't know what they have in Europe, I forget, I think they have the same as Ireland and England, where it's a handle you push down. But when there's a round doorknob, people sit and report in the dreams that they cannot turn the handle. They can't grip it. Now that suggests to me a non-material experience in a material environment. So you're not material, you're in a material environment and you cannot turn the handle. 
The second thing that's come up a lot, sorry, it came up in four emails. There was three until this afternoon and I got one more tonight and I nearly fell off my bleeding chair when I read it. For some reason, people are dreaming about Barcelona in, in Catalan. Not Spain, they don't want to offend the people. The city of Barcelona appeared in four people's dreams. They were all there and the only one I got that wrote back to me about it said they were never visited Barcelona. I don't know about the rest. Why is Barcelona why did Barcelona appear in the dreams of one person in Ireland, one in the UK and two in America? The city of Barcelona appeared in four people's dreams out of 200 or so e emails I read. Now if you were to quantify that statistically, that's a very high statistical number. Now, I looked on the news this week, and there's nothing in the news about Barcelona. So they did not receive a prompt from watching the news or listening to the radio or seeing a newspaper headline. We have four people, four people in the number of 200. When you think of all the cities in the world, for one city to be specifically mentioned like that, that's a quite a high percentage when you think of all the cities in Europe and all the cities in the world, four people mentioned Barcelona. So Barcelona and Catalonians on the Iberian Peninsula, should we watch it? Is something happening there? I don't know. I don't know. But Barcelona is a kind of a dark kind of place anyway. Now, the only thing I can think of is a few months back on this radio show, I told a story about this woman called the Beast of Barcelona, who was a, an, abort, an abortionist and prostitute who sold uh, children as, uh, decom as uh, dissected parts to uh, the wealthy and the elite, the sex toys and things like that. So I don't know if some of you may have had, re had a recall of that show, but Barcelona is one to watch. Now, I said the houses and buildings were common, but that's, they're, they're symbols. They're, they're something you would expect to see. That was the most overwhelming thing in the dream. There are things you would expect to see, like there was lots of people talking about climbing a mountain, there was lots of people talking about walking along a road, there was lots of people talking, a lot of people saw, see me in dreams, for some reason I appear in dreams a lot, that's not surprising because I, you're hearing me talking on the air, you're aware of who I am, so I'm not, I'm, I discount when I appear in the dreams. But this is the one that really I, I think could be significant, to China and Chinese things. Now. I don't know if this could be a phobia about China's power. We've heard recently there's been stories about China is trying to wreck the world's economy. But it's, it's people all over the world have reported to me of something to do with either China, Chinese looking people, I'm not being racist, you know, Chinese people you have know, a certain look, or, or, but they're all negative. Now, I'm not, that's not to say there's anything wrong with Chinese people. But, Everything was negative. There was all they said. There was a sense of something not right with China, and there was something. That, and Chinese people were upset. So there was a sense of uh, dysfunctionality, not with the Chinese people, with their Chinese culture, but but their relationship to it, as if something was wrong in China or something. Now there's a lot of negative. China is a country that gets hit with an awful lot of negative show, not negative uh, propaganda. We've been hearing for years about the sweatshops in China. Well, I know people who have products made in China, and they, they don't, they're not, they, they, they went over there, they've come back and told me that not, they weren't sweatshops. They were just like any other factory in, in Ireland or the UK or Europe or America where there were certain working hours and the people were, were working in nice conditions. The, fa the, the sweatshops were the likes of Microsoft and Apple and the big corporations. But there's lots and lots of pe factories in China which are small, local, family-run businesses who do business for Western companies that are not sweatshops. In fact, they're the majority. But there's been a lot of uh, a lot of negative publicity and that about the dog eating festival and all that stuff recently. But this seems to have a prophetic quality to it. I don't know. Is there going to be a, a terrorist attack in China or Barcelona? I hope not. Is there going to be an earthquake or something like that? Is there going to be a major world event happening in China or maybe even Barcelona, but specifically China? I mean, one that impacts the human consciousness. Lots of people. Let's hope it's not a disastrous thing or horrible thing. But it's very strange that 
the, dra- the dreams were so specific. Like other dreams, people said things like, it was a, a country that looked a bit like Ireland. It was a place that looked a bit like, that, like, like Switzerland. It was a desert landscape. It was green fields or a lake at the end of a, at the length of a valley. I was on the coast. The only two places, well, it was a few places, but the only, the only two places that were specifically mentioned in several dreams was Barcelona and China. Now, so that's one to look out for. Now, I'm not, I was going to devote the whole show tonight to just the sleep and the dream stuff, but because this thing is getting so big, this is going to be an ongoing project for the show. And so, because you're so interested out there, as I, as am I, and maybe who knows, we're going to develop a real kind of predictive or archetypal database for the first time in history that can actually identify trends in society. We, we have the ability here to actually put on the kind of research programs that universities should be doing, but they don't ourselves here. So if you can help, you can think of any software that I could use. Email me. Thomas Sheridan Arts at gmx.com. You can go to my website, Thomas Sheridan Arts. Keep giving me the dream stories. And some of you have sent me dream artwork, and I'm going to post some of that. I want to post some of that up as well. And uh, that's that's going to be really interesting as well. Uh, it's that, I always say that yeah, if you don't, if you wake up in the morning, sometimes it's very hard to write uh, legibly, or uh, sometimes a, a couple of words. And a little picture is enough for you to fully recall the dream later on in the day. So that's a that's a really a really a, a really good thing to work on. But we will be doing this and continuing this, and this will be an ongoing thing, and it'll be a regular part of the show from now on, as long as people are not bored with it. Because uh, to, to sleep, perchance to dream, is is looking like to be a far more profound statement than what uh, Shakespeare, I think it was Hamlet, yes it was Hamlet, meant it to be. Now the second part of the show, which I'll begin now because I want to get into this, if this is late at night for you, you might find this disturbing. I have gotten, well I'm not kidding you, remember I said about the sleep paralysis stuff and the shadow people, well people who didn't necessarily send me their dream stories of that week and I thank you for that and I also thank the other people who sent me this lots of people sent me terrifying stories of experiences with entities in the sleep that not only were all very very similar but also frightened me because they described a feeling or an entity that I had seen in a dream which I spoke about a few weeks ago where I was, I was 2012 October I dreamt I was in a room and this white thing appeared out someone opened the closet and I felt like it was an, an electrical experience it was an experience of electricity before I get to that I want to read this email I got now this now the last week's show about the Vaduger, I haven't forgot the people who contacted me about that. We're going to do another another uh, follow up on that when we have more more info. But I haven't forgotten about that. Thank you for that. Any more of the Vaduger stories? Keep sending them. But this week I'm concentrating just on the sleep and the shadow people and all that kind of stuff. Now this 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 message I received from a lady from uh, I'm assuming she's from the Middle East. She had a Middle Eastern name, and she lives in the U.S. now. Very highly educated people. I think from her, I'm not going to mention her name to protect her privacy, but I think from her pre- Facebook profile, she looks like she's either she's a college professor or a researcher or something. So what, you know, this will be interesting in a few ways. And let me read it to you. Dear Thomas, although I experienced, I'm going to sorry, pardon me, I'm not at the top of the page. Let me read this to you. Hello Thomas, I've been following your posts on sleep and dreams and listened to your talk on the Velocity of Now, July 8, 2015 and I want to share this story with you. This happened a couple of years ago, a short time after I met my ex-boyfriend who was a journalist who worked in the battle lines in the Syrian wars. 
He often told me that he had nightmares and that his sleep was troubled. I'm just going down here. And that his sleep was troubled. And it was indeed. It made sense at the time because he was so traumatized that he witnessed a number of beheadings, relatives killed in front of his own eyes. He was also kidnapped and incarcerated a number of times. Whenever we spent the night together, I would experience sleep. Dis- I would experience sleep disorders too, but there was something else which I remember listening to, to your on your talk. One night, I remember him waking up repetitively to find myself paralyzed, and every time I could see these dark shadows of tall men resembling what resembled long capes or coats with wide brimmed hats exactly like you described them until then I'd never heard about these shadows I thought it was my imagination gone wild every time I opened my eyes and looked at the window I could see them walking down a hill towards my apartment or I would see them walking through the door into the room it was as if I fell asleep and woke up again to see them and it happened many times I couldn't move and that made it very disturbing the strange thing is that I knew very well without them saying it that they were coming for him and not coming for me although I experience sleep paralysis now and then but without seeing any kind of entities I wasn't sure whether it was a nightmare or a real experience but it felt very real now I am convinced it is real now this is an academic talking here here's the funny part when he woke up in the morning my ex-boyfriend was cheerful said that it was the most peaceful night he'd had in a long time and that he didn't have any nightmares is it possible that I caught his demons that night I should probably mention he accompanied armed Islamic groups for months on end, day in, day out. That was before the appearance of ISIS, but they were the same groups that swore allegiances to ISIS after that. Accompanying them meant agreeing with them, although he was an atheist himself, and practicing their rituals, i.e. pretending to be like them. When I asked him how he could be with people he radically disagreed with, he said he would do anything including befriending the devil himself if it meant overthrowing the regime in Syria. Later on, he had to flee to Turkey after these same people turned against him and put him on a death list. Another detail he would often say that is that only people like us, meaning intelligent and intellectual people, deserve a good life, but he called other people slaves and he used to say they deserved what happened to them and that life was designed to be like that from the beginning and that should remain like that this scared and baffled me knowing that he did human humanitarian relief next to journalism though I believe people attract what happens to them but to say they deserved it was too harsh a moral judgment I'm not sure if these, if these details are important. He was a Syrian, but I am not Syrian, and I've never been to Syria before. We met and lived together in the USA. Now, I have heard this kind of story from several people, both men and women, where they were sleeping after having sex with someone, and the relationship was either going sour, ending, or they just weren't feeling right about it. And they would see these shadow people appear through this, an episode of sleep paralysis. When they woke up and they told the person they were with that they had these dreams, the other person either said, oh, I dream those things all the time and it doesn't really bother me, or oh I know what you mean or some kind of acknowledgement but not a, a sort of a, like a, a sympathetic validation 
it's almost like, oh yeah, you see him too? That kind of thing. Where the other person is absolutely petrified. Now, looking at this shadow people phenomenon, both with doing some research and also the emails I've got, it seems to fall into two categories in that there's two kind of distinct humanoid groups I mean when I say an an anthropomorphic they look like human beings or they have a human shape of a head and two arms a body and two legs the first and the most common one are the shadow people and there seems to be a very interesting dynamic there the woman woman in this email described the the guy with the black cape and I hear that's constantly reported do you ever see Sandaman Port? It's that like delicious drink from Portugal. It's a it's like a fortified wine. On the bottle they have a character called the Don. And he wears a black cape and he wears this kind of wide brimmed hat. And it look they always and he's holding like a, a glass of port in his hand. Now that's a, that that graphic has an interesting history. That was not designed by the Sandaman family. That was a character called the Don that was designed by a Scottish guy that has very interesting Freemasonic roots. Now we'll get into, I won't go too much into that. But, basically the hat looks like Freddy Krueger. Now, they're described as shadows, but not like shadows on the wall, but three-dimensional shadows. They're like a, a full shadow, and there's a hierarchy. You have the guy with the cape, the Freddy Krueger, Sandman Port-looking guy, also looks like the shadow in the shadow knows the old stories in the 30s but just a black form there's no definition there and this character seems to be the leader and he has minions and the minions are basic shadow people they just have a body and a head and they seem to want to get into people this is a common thing over and over over again some people report things like them even saying screaming at them I want to get into you I want and, and they describe these the very strange sounds that are like continuous growls or screams and the people are absolutely terrified now there's another type of one that's described and this is very similar this is the experience that I heard by that I experienced in 2012 under the what I would I call them the electrical night jesters. I know it's a funny name, but I'll explain why I call them the electrical night jesters. They seem to be made out of static. You know when you want on TV, and it makes you wonder now about that movie uh, Poltergeist, where the little girl goes, "They're here." It's that when she's and she has her hands on the TV with this, this with the the white noise, that white noise that that, that appears on a, a TV when there's no signal and the electro when there's no input signal and the, the, the charge coupled device through the electron gun is just firing randomly electrons at the screen on the phosphorus screen well their bodies are made of that their bodies are actually made of that like you can look around them and they have a bizarre smile like a clown on their face and now I'm one like, like a painted on clown smile and when they come near a person in a state of poly- sleep paralysis, the person like I had in 2012, although my one didn't look like that, but it kind of did. It was wearing it was wearing a simple cape, the one that I was I was uh, well, I encountered, should we say? There's a sense of the energy in your body or your soul almost draining out of your feet, and that was what happened to me. And it's a, it feels very much like any of you have ever been electrocuted by 220 volts AC like I have many times working on electrical stuff it's a very unique sensation when you're holding onto the wire and you're going and you're shaking well it feels like that and uh, you can, it's hard to let go and it's, it's almost like a, some of a, you have to kind of scream or shout or throw yourself away from the wire and that's what these, these electric, elect, electrical night jesters have an effect on. Now, let's let's take this to the to the next level, right? We have basically what we have here is the alien abduction, the alien abduction experience from the 1980s. Now, anyone who's followed my work knows that I totally discredit 
and disbelieve and think it's total bullshit the idea is that aliens appear that come to the earth from other spaceships and I believe that there are strange lights in the sky and there are unidentified flying objects and bizarre phenomena but because these great professors these great tenured professors in NASA and the military can't explain them they have invented the alien visitation mythology to, to, to deal with them because otherwise if they, if they have to say to people these, these things are mysterious these things have intelligence we don't know what they are they, they, they would lose authority and the world would go mad well the same thing with these, these entities people were seeing them and they seem to have been a flare up which began in New York in 19, the late 1970s where it really kicked off again in the modern sense and immediately you had writers like Bud Hopkins saying it was aliens, aliens, aliens abductions, aliens this, aliens this, aliens that, to enforce that idea into your head. Now Whitley Stryber in his book Communion and the very, very interesting film with Christopher Walken did not refer to them as aliens, he referred to them as visitors. And the alien one, like the one on the cover of the book or the one that peeks its head in the doors, is only a part of what he experiences one of the things he appearances several things he experienced were not like that there was gorilla ape like monkey things which I had when I was 17 I, we spoke about like on the Fuseli paint the Henry Fuseli famous Henry Fuseli painting the, the dream or the nightmare or what it's called also the electronic the electrical Nightchester appears in it if you watch the film communion there's a scene where this kind of wind up thing comes Aah! comes towards him in his bed that's exactly the creature or very similar what I had, had a white cape that it came to me and they tell you everyone it's aliens it's aliens because it's so it's so strange to the, they have no clue no clue to the authorities what these things are what sleep is what dreaming is what nightmares is what night, paraly what night paralysis is that they make up a story within a kind of a cultural pop context that it is Oh, it's alien abduction but many people now when you ask them if they've had alien experience at night and I say really think back about it and, and really look at the experience and forget that you ever heard about space aliens do you still think about that, that they were space aliens and every single one of them says no because that's, that's, that's a prejudiced idea like when they see a strange object in the sky they go alien spacecraft they don't so that's to make them kill off all the other possibilities, the more more fantastic possibilities and far more interesting ones that the, that, they, that 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 cannot be explained. And the same with this alien abduction that started in the seventies. Now, they seem to be, and this is this is I'm a chronic a chronic asthmatic. I spend many of you, as many of you know, and I've nearly died a few times from asthma. And it's probably what will kill me one day, but it seems to be related to loss of breeding experience as people see these things have these experiences they lose their ability to have automatic breathing and they have to force themselves to breathe in order to avoid suffocation but the life is literally being sucked out of them the breath is being taken away often the entity lays on top of them sometimes having sex with them by the way that's very common and sometimes they appear on the seat at the first thing they experience lying down at bed night now a lot of women and men who've written to me but women are more forward about these things who are in relationships with what I believe are psychopaths by the way they describe them as this woman does this woman who wrote the, the email I just read out because that sounds like a psychopath the way he was talking to her about people are deserve it because they're not like great like us now they often describe now I'm not talking about the women who their, their ex just left them and they I'm a goddess I'm a goddess how dare you reject me because I'm, I'm, I'm a goddess no not those ones I'm talking about not the mentally ill I'm talking about women who've been genuinely abused by or manipulated by a psychopath a lot of them I would say well not a lot maybe 25% have told me they had these bizarre experiences of lying in bed after they had sex with the, the male psychopath and it happened with a couple of female ones too uh, they would look up at they'd be lying there looking up at the ceiling 
and the ceiling would begin to have black shapes dancing all over it almost slate snake like creatures I've heard that a lot it sometimes they manifested as shadow people now what makes the shadow people think really weird is that they don't just appear in the room this was very uh, this was very strongly put across by uh, what's his name Whitley Stryber in communion when he when he was calling the visitors they don't just appear in the room like as if by, like the shopkeeper and Mr. Ben as if by magic there's a you can, they're specifically seen entering like if that woman says she saw them walking down the road towards the house other people say they see them coming in the door they see them walking into the living room they see them coming around the door they see them peeking around an open door now when the door is closed and all the doors are locked they don't have they don't seem to be able to get in but many people who well, when the doors are open now what does that tell you what does that remind you of when I spoke about the beginning of the show where people are in apartment buildings and they can't go when they're dreaming they're in an the apartment building and they, they believe they, they can't get into a bit of room because their hands cannot physically grip the, the door handle but if the door is ajar or left open they can go in that way you see where this is going but the whole thing oh, another one that's very interesting as well is that people I first heard this years ago a friend of mine in Dublin had a roommate who was a Bosnian who was he was a Bosnian Serb and he was in the, the he was in the Serbian whatever they were the Serbian militia in Bosnia and he was in a lot of battles and he killed people and he, he was had terrible post traumatic stress and he had dreams of demons coming to get him and the only way he could get sleep at night was to lie on his side with the stereo and the TV on with the volume just up slightly listening to heavy metal music and the teeth just light slightly so he could hear it and if he did that he did not have sleep paralysis or he did not see these these devils as he calls them well that seems to be common as well that people who have these experiences that they now this is weird because remember i said about the the electrical night jesters how they seem to be composed of tv static well these people don't have that experience if they have a tv on with just the static and some people become obsessive about it but they start buying old TVs here, there and everywhere and, and, and I'm starting to wonder you know, you may, it makes you wonder too about why did they make a switch to digital TV that doesn't have that static experience anymore you know, well, why did they make a switch to that and these, you know, why are governments obsessed with, get, with, with not us, us getting rid of analog TV if anyone saw my present, you can buy my presentation now it, uh, at AB6 but you would see me talking about something happened on the changeover from analog electrical to digital electrical will seem to have spiritually affected us if you want to call it spiritual so I'm like I, I'm having to think now if I see an old analog TV in a shop I'm probably going to buy it and keep it just in case but it's just weird that these and it makes you also wonder about as, as Elvis Presley descended into madness how he would sit there in front of a wall of TVs with different channels in the front of them and fall asleep. Remember he was shooting at them at one point? But these people found that they put the TVs on with the static, just the static on the TV, that they would not have the night paralysis experience. Almost as if the TV kept them away or neutralized them. Now I've heard, some people sent me different scenarios to explain I wrote back to them and says okay I'm not trying to scare you well let me get a cup of tea here home I'm not trying to scare you but have you any theories about what the shadow people might be one person put up this very interesting idea that the man with the hat the brimmed hat was a tulpa of Freddy Krueger from A Nightmare on Elm Street remember Freddy Krueger he had that hat and that story is about kids being attacked inside their dreams and he said because those films are so heavily watched and, and that cult that it, it implanted this in, into the culture that it was actually a tulpa created of Freddy Krueger that came into people's dreams that was a very interesting one 
others said to me they were are they people who were aborted as babies in the womb and have grown up now that's an interesting one because I have a friend in Israel who ha, she used to she was a she's, she's an Orthodox Jew and she used to counsel pe women who had uh, shall we say post traumatic stress after but I know the feminists are going mad saying oh abortion is a wonderful thing and every woman who's ever had an abortion feels liberated and all this stuff but some women have do have abortions for whatever reason and religious or whatever and they do have tremendous guilt about it and she told me and she was an orthodox Jew that many of these women came to her saying they were followed by a black shape constantly and they they felt that that was the kid that they had aborted is that true or not I don't know but that was another person put that idea and they're looking for a body and they're kind of at war with human beings they're at war with human beings and they're, they're saying that's why they want to get in our bodies like they're saying your, your, your culture allows abortion and you know killing us in the womb is very different than killing us uh, and I'm pro-choice I don't think I'm, 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 I'm waving a religious flag here but you, you, us being killed in the womb is very different than if you were killed as if you were born because the, the, the soul never completed some kind of change and therefore they're doomed to walk the earth as these shadow entities and they grow up as, and they grow to be full people and they're at war with us they're at war with us now it is interesting to think that these things really started to take off in the United States after Roe v. Wade was passed in the early 70s that's when the first mass alien abductions were reported I'm not going to say it's true I'm just throwing that out there and this is what people told me and that way it could be also related to the black ideas and lots of people said it could also be us uh, any one of us or psychopaths who can, you know psychopaths don't dream they, uh, that's one of the things you know about a psychopath no psychopath dreams because dreaming is processed in the frontal the dreaming visual imagery is processed in the frontal cortex of the human brain and their frontal cortex are switched off whether no they're not broken but it's switched off whether they're asleep or they're awake but however if there's still some kind of traveling entity that could be them this might explain their need to be hostile it doesn't explain things like you have two different well I'll get to that in a second but it, it that was another one another one person that told me uh, that came up with a very interesting idea they said Thomas if if we have that in this life right if we have in this reality different races of people different types of people different ethnic groups as well as different animals different uh, you know species of mammals and so on if there if if beyond the veil in the dream world is another reality there th then these different types of entities whether it be the shadow man that's a that's just like a grunt but there's also other ones described that are like nine feet ten feet tall with black with red eyes one of them there's cats cat people constantly report black cat black cat looking people and there's also uh, the, 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 the electrical night gestures, as I call them. There would also be creatures on that side of the, the veil like, that are different. Like That would explain the monkey kind of thing that attacks you in the, in, that I, I had in the 17. That would also explain demons and all these other kinds of shapes, gargoyles and all these other kind of monstrous shapes. They would exist in those forms, on the, what, we, what we perceive as monstrous, on the other side. So I thought that was a very interesting idea. Now, there's definitely the, the location for these things are very interesting. They don't seem to happen in rural areas, which you think they would. They seem to happen mostly in suburbia or to students on university campuses or in hospitals. Now, if you think about it, Suburbia is a very unhappy place. University campuses are also very unhappy places. And hospitals can often be very hot, are often, are usually very unhappy and traumatic places. What do suburbia, university campuses, and hospitals have in common? Drugs. Lots of people in suburbia are medicated. 
order up the drinking heavily or the smoking pot in huge quantities. They're taking SSRIs and other kinds of tranquilizers. University campuses, there's a lot of binge drinking, that kind, of, not that kind of thing. A lot of uh, heavy weed smoking, and also a lot of the social pressures on university campuses. A lot of university and college students are very unhappy. They just pretend they are. That's what all the binge drinking is about. The medical the insecurities, and also hospitals while well, people have drugged them to the tits. Now nurses have told me they've seen dark shapes walking through hospitals. So they seem to be related to trauma, both in a relationship or also in a social context. People at the end of a relationship, a relationship that's not working, a person away from home at university is having a hard time. Someone in suburbia, a person in a war zone. People in hospitals. And because they create a psychically weakened state, they seem to be more prone for attack and another thing that people tell me told me is that fear seems to feed them so if they if people either the Christians or if they're into new age things or into indigenous kind of things if they invoke prayers it doesn't matter what the prayer or the religious canon is what that seems to do is release the fear and the lack of the fear stops the entity from getting in or attacking when the more people are afraid of them the more danger they seem to attract in terms of these things appearing there's definitely an infection element to it a lot of it seems to be related to substance abuse uh, alcoholism definitely that's when people start seeing you know pink elephants and all that uh, alcoholism now and not, not even blistering alcoholism but drinking too much in general because that stops dreaming and it seems to create people who drink too much seem to stop dreaming but they get night paralysis it's the weirdest shit heavy drug use especially like it, marijuana cannabis they, 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 they let the entities in like you wouldn't believe uh, be very fucking careful on, t on the jungle juice you know these things are all in moderation in the right places with the right people and the right energies you smoking weed all day or drinking beer all day in a dysfunctional family don't be don't be uh, surprised if an entity attaches itself to you same with the jungle juice. You go into a, uh, you do ayahuasca with a bunch of people you don't know. Don't be, don't be, don't, don't be surprised if something shows up that shouldn't. Now, see, this ties up with all this thing. They see, they want this into the dream world. See, they, they want. It's, it, here's the way. It's almost. Here we go. Let's 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 really take this thing home now. In the last ten minutes, right? Let's speculate further. There are two realities, just say, right? We hear like scientists talk about their multiple universe, not, but they've never proved anything. But one, th one thing we could tangibly prove through our dreams is there's absolutely two realities that we experience. There's this reality that you're listening to me on this radio show right now, and then there's the dream reality which we enter into, which is like a foreign country we're exploring. By contrast, the entities on the other side are foreigners that are inside our reality during episodes of sleep or sleep paralysis. Now let's really bring this home. When you have two rival powers, the wake world and the sleep world, do you also have warfare? And has the invasion be gone are we under attack because at certain points of history these things seem to massively flare up the Victorian period the Middle Ages especially and now in the modern period are we being attacked by the other side. I don't even know if there's entities on the other side, but that stuff is just imagination. But if so, 
If so, let's 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 indulge that possibility. What are where are their defences? Why, why, is suddenly governments who are the most infected at all trying to get everybody smoking weed all the time now? Have you notice that? It, weed was oh don't can it you could be, you go to prison for years for having a small amount of cannabis in your house and your life room. Now from the UK to Ireland to all over America everywhere they're all saying oh cannabis must be regulated. Of course Monsanto are involved in this folks. It has to be regulated. They're putting us on that. Alcohol has never been cheaper. Uh, they're you know watch the sports do drink beer. Uh, uh, take your SSRIs all that stuff and you are a shoreline without a defense. And I'm seeing more and more cases of pathological behavior of people who indulge in these things and have instant personality changes. I'm seeing it more and more. I'm not talking about uh, you know, casual drinkers or casual weed smokers or people who've done the ayahuasca a few times. I'm talking about ones who are doing it. Graham Hancock appears to be addicted to these substances. I know you all think, oh, he's a great man, and he's oh, you know. But Graham Hancock said something that I found very, very spooky. He said that it was a con they were the conquistadors in reverse. That all these shamans were now bringing all this jungle juice, ayahuasca to Europe and other places in order to heal us. Okay, what? In the past that was called chemical warfare. Oh, you know, these uh, 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 an indigenous people that our ancestors wiped off the face of the earth are coming here with their ayahuasca and they're getting all the Westerners to take it? What? And you're supposed to go, oh, so spiritual. Really? The Aztecs were spiritual. A bunch of vegetarians who mostly ate potatoes. And what they, when they weren't doing that, they were cutting the hearts out of people daily, hourly, on top of these temples, until rivers of blood ran down these temples. These are the, this is the land of ayahuasca. And they're all coming here now to as con as conquistadors in reverse and then if you look at the last book that was written by by Graham Hancock a friend read me some passages from it it was absolute brutal it was like almost impossible to read it was full of blood guts and gore now I'm sure I'm sure you know I know people have met Graham Hancock said he's a lovely man and everything like that but he it has I mean the man wasn't what was a cannabis addict and he was a cannabis addict he admits that and now he's a, an ayahuasca addict. He's talking about that when you get that one hit, you're taken to the other side. What? What? Have we lost our fucking minds? Your job as a person is to is to safeguard your consciousness. Safeguard it. Not to make it an open land for invasion. You have a fucking skull around your brain for a reason. You also have a firewall around your consciousness. You have, just like you have to protect yourself from bacterial infection, if you have a cut and it gets dirty, of course you clean it. You don't push more mud into it. Oh, it's the earth mother goddess, her, her soil, her dirt, her, her soil, I'm pushing it into my veins. And you drop dead of septicemia. The same with this stuff. Now I, I, I've read so, I've read this week enough. Now I'm not this is to, to not say it's a fact, but I've read I've got enough now for us to for you know I'm telling you I'm finally starting to get answers in the psychopath thing, and I think it's what that that shaman African shaman told me. It's the demon world trying to invade this world. Are you mad? Are you mad? I I, I want to go into deep Google deep dream for Christ's sake. People are making photographs of uh, artificial intelligence is getting into their, uh, taking their photograph and using their search engine history to create these weird pictures. Pe they're disgusting looking. There's nothing pleasant about them. They look like they were created by soulless life. 
and then people are watching they're looking at these deep Google deep dream pictures of themselves and other things and then they're saying I couldn't sleep or I had nightmares it, I didn't feel right I felt nauseous yeah 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 why don't you why don't you why don't you you, 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 like the biggest fucking spliff in the world get yourself a couple of six packs and, and look at Google Deep Dream all night you see this is why I'm always pushing this idea that like we must we, we must go to the dark side now by go to the dark side we must explore the dark archetypes this is why things like gothic art horror stories and things like HP Lovecraft and all these kinds of ideas are very important because they help to build you a consciousness that's not fairy tale. I talk about the Disney fairy tales. The original fairy tales that the Disney ones are based on are absolutely brutal and horrific. The idea was to teach the children it's bad, it's bad shit out there. The same with the horror stories, the archetypes and all that. They they, they, they form the same function. They create a sense of vigilance, not hyper vigilance, but vigilance that you're aware that certain things, your your consciousness must be protected. This is why all these airy fairy new age types like ah I love and then end up in these cults where they're, they're killing people and stuff like that because they didn't develop the the, the, the firewall around their consciousness. So this is this is this, is this war? I don't know, but I tell you one thing: I'm not taking that chance. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to give up the stewardship of my consciousness to be more spiritual man or something like that or to get stoned or to get wasted I'm not going to do that I'm already seeing enough proof around me of like hardcore stoners and alcoholics who absolutely seem infected pathologically infected they're not in there anymore something else jumped in well, they're, they're, they're writing they're writing they're writing essays all day online about what earth mother goddesses and crones they are well, their kids have, have, no, have a look of neglect and no love in their eyes. And you tell me that's a good thing. And I see it's like alcoholic mothers, alcoholic fathers. People drink, I'm not an alcoholic. I drink three bottles of wine tonight. Oh, alcoholics are what people, alcoholics is, uh, you know, they're people who drink cheap lager and hang out in street corners or in bars. We've got to start getting real fucking wise here. And I can tell you something that they're coming at us. And I'm convinced that the, the, one of the major parts of this was the removal of of analog TV and the replacement of digital TV. When the, when I saw an Irish government minister saying, I will do everything in my power to make sure that even the remote islands off the west coast have digital TV before my term in office is up. They were ups in America as well. They were obsessed with getting us digital TV. And I remember someone saying to me, do you ever see what it says HDTV? What does that sound like? Hades. Anyway, are we at war? Maybe. Are we being invaded? Maybe. Could I be talking bollocks? Maybe. I don't know. But I've got so. If you read what I read this week from what people told me, stuff that's never reported in the mainstream, never reported anywhere, you'd be as angry and frightened as I am. Please keep those dream stories coming. If you have, if I've spoken anything tonight that you've had experience of, please tell me about it. You can get my email address through my website, thomasheridanarts.com. And let's, if nobody else wants to build a firewall around their consciousness, well, maybe it's time. And, and society wants us open, open targets, coastlines that that can that can be easily invaded. Doesn't mean we have to go that way. Maybe it's up to us to actually build this experiment together. So thank you very much. That error went very fast. And I will see you next week, this time next week. And and we're going to, we're never gonna stop with this for a long time. This is this is where we are now. Thank you all very much. Thank you for joining the conversation. Thank you for all you've done. Please, please, please look after yourself. Please do not become an open target. Because like my hands are shaking here, my goosebumps are stinging up, standing up. But I've got a hell of an education the last couple of weeks and uh, I'm not spreading fear upon, I'm spreading safety. Feck them if they can't take a joke and good night.
Charlie Bates Radio on the, what is it, the 